Mr. Rep. Good morning. How we doing? What's going on? How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks so much for joining us. And you've got a close connection through your wife to Mississippi State. And I want to I know, do. what does the Rappaport household think of the pirate Mike Leach coming to Stark <laughs> Vegas? You know, it's been a... It's been a big swing for the Rapport household because, you know, we were pretty convinced that Joe Judge was going to get the job. Okay. Um, you know, whenever, whenever that was. Tuesday, I forget the actual date, but Wednesday, whenever that was. Um, it was, I mean, the deal was done. He just needed to give his answer. And, you know, the money was set. Everything was done. And then, um, you know, Judge kept putting him off and putting him off just in case he got a call back from the Giants. And next thing you know, he's the Giants coach. And Mississippi State's like, all right, well, I guess we're not getting that guy. Um, and you know, I would say this, I found out probably a couple of days before that it was going to be leech. Um, I get her about a day before, uh, I told, I told my wife, she told her family, she started doing some research. Um, I think she's very happy. She knows he's crazy. She also knows he scores a lot of points. So I think she's, <laughs> I think she's pretty happy. All right. An emotional roller coaster in the Rappaport household last week, deciding on who the Mississippi state head coach is going to be. When it comes to Joe Brady going to Carolina, do you think his style of offense that he just brought from LSU means that Cam Newton is out because Cam wouldn't necessarily fit in that type of offense? I would say that if Cam Newton is in his prime and healthy uh, and without a contract situation hanging over his head, he could fit in any offense. Um, my assumption, I shouldn't say my assumption, my belief, my understanding is that the Panthers will look to trade Cam Newton when he is healthy. Uh, we don't know for sure when he's going to be healthy. He had surgery with hopes of being healthy in March, so that is the goal. So I would expect him to be healthy in March, right around there, and for them to seek a trade with him regardless. Because um, remember, you know, if Cam Newton is on the Panthers next year, he's not going to want to go out there with no guaranteed money in a greatly undervalued deal. Because Cam Newton, when he's healthy, is worth a lot more than the $18 million he's going to be paid, right? Yep. So he would want a new contract, have a hard time imagining the Panthers with a completely new regime, would re-up. Um, so to me, all signs point to him being traded regardless of the offensive scheme. Uh, and I think the Panthers will, you know, will start new probably as they should. There's skepticism that Kevin Stefanski can work out in Cleveland. And part of that, I think, is just because he wasn't the name brand of Josh McDaniels. But when I look at Stefanski, he's a smart young guy. There's been a lot of smart young offensive guys that have come into the league and succeeded. Matt LaFleur is in the NFC Championship game being one of those types of guys. And he kind of fits that mold. But the question is, can you succeed when you are running your game plans on Monday morning over hours over a desk with your owner, Jimmy Haslam. Does that part of things, which Haslam admitted is a thing, make you it's concerned that it can't work? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think there are definitely some things that if you're a good, smart football coach with enough talent, you can overcome. I mean, you know, Freddie Kitchens, you know, was not obviously was not the interim coach Greg Williams was, but all those things existed when the Browns were closing really hard in uh, 2018 and looking really good. So they all overcame it then. Um, I would say, you know, meeting with the owner for hours on end on a Monday is obviously not ideal. It's not what anybody wants. Uh, But every team meets with their owner, gives their owner a very specific update. They don't, you know, all happen in person. But I remember talking to a GM a couple days ago and just being like, oh, man, can you believe, you know, what the Browns are required to do? They got to talk to their owner about everything. And he was like, we talk to our owner about everything. You know, it's a little bit faster, but they run everything by their owner. And I, I think we all sort of, um, you know, we all sort of pile on the Browns as we should. They deserve it. But there are some things they do that a lot of other teams do. Um, you know, for instance, everybody's going crazy about, you know, discussing the game plan with the analytics people and having someone on the headset. That's what more than 50% of the teams do right now. I mean, you know, Doug Peterson is a great coach, has really done a fantastic job with the Eagles. He has an analytics person on the headset with him 100% of the time before key decisions. And he gets a lot of credit for those decisions. No one says, hey, man, that analytics guy from you know Yale or whatever did a great job. Yeah, Doug Marone admitted he does the same thing. He's on headset with analytics department constantly as well. Ian Rapport joins us from the NFL Network. 
But it's interesting because your first inclination was, oh, God, this can't work because he's got to meet with Haslam for hours on end. But what you're saying is those concerns were allayed a little bit because you spoke to somebody in the NFL that said, hey, it's not that big a deal. Right. A lot of teams do that where you have to meet with the owner, you have to discuss things, and you have to, you know, I wouldn't say, like, run your game plan by the analytics people. That's probably what's, you know, being misconstrued here. But, yes, like, they do talk to the analytics people about the game plan. And, you know, I think my main issue here, uh, and I'm guilty as well, is that no one knows what analytics is. They just don't. They think it's like a bunch of nerds doing math, which I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. But it's really just it's really just discussing what you plan to do with people who have the research to let you know where the tendencies are or whether that makes sense. It's just running your discussing your game plan by people with a lot of statistical information to give you an idea for whether that's the right move or not, or whether it's you know smart to go against tendencies. Or not. I mean, there are just people who study these things. And to me, like, if you're someone who synthesizes a lot of information very well and very simply as a head coach, you want this. You want the information to back up your decisions and what you already think. Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network joins us here on the show. The last two weeks, the Tennessee Titans have been able to bully their way through the playoffs. Are the Chiefs better suited to counter that bully ball? than the Ravens and Patriots were? Um, On defense, no. I would say it's going to be a real problem to stop Derrick Henry. I mean, that is a legitimate issue, and I don't know that. I mean, especially if Chris Jones doesn't play, we'll see his status, but either way, he's not going to be 100%. Um, You know, so that's really hard. I mean, that's based on the weakness of the Chiefs' defense. So can they stop Derrick Henry? Can they stand up to the bully ball? I would say probably not. However, they do have Patrick Mahomes. And he doesn't play defense, but he plays offense, and he scores a lot of points, and his team scores a lot of points. So I don't know if the Chiefs can do it defensively. I think they're going to score enough points offensively that it's not really going to matter if they give up 180 yards to Derrick Henry, which, you know, they will probably do. Finally, how different are the Packers today than they were a couple of months ago when they got shellacked by the Niners? You know, they're a little bit different in that, um, you know, Devonta Adams is now healthy and looking like himself. That helps. That helps a lot. Um, I think, you know, his explosiveness, I mean, watching him on the field this week, and I was like, okay, this guy's still really awesome. Um, Aaron Rodgers look, looks excellent, you know, and it's hard to criticize one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, and so I'm definitely not in a position to do it. But midway through the season, there was definitely some things where you're like, Rodgers isn't quite right. He doesn't understand the system. He doesn't know what he's looking at. It's taking time. He's not making quick decisions. All of that was true. I see him on the field this week and, you know, toward the end of the season, and I'm like, I think he's getting it. I think he's getting ready to hit his stride. I mean, some of those throws he was making this weekend were like, Ooh. Um, I think they look better. I still think, you know, the 49ers, to me, just based on the way they run the ball, are probably going to win. But I think it's going to be a good game, and I think the Packers are better. And I can't wait for it, honestly. Yeah, same here. NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport joins us. Follow him on Twitter, at Rapshe, because he is all over everything NFL news-related. You can see him coming up on Sunday. NFL Network's NFL Game Day morning begins at 9 a.m. Eastern time. A phenomenal pregame show to get you ready for the championship game for this weekend. Rap, it's always good to talk to you, man. Thanks so much for doing it. 